we are here doing a new segment. It's called Finding and Discovering and Dealing with True Racism. You know, we've heard lots of things all over the internet about people who are, have said they've had claimed against racist actions against them. And one of our great uh, worries about this is that often these prove to be fake racist events. Like, you know, ja Jesse, uh, what's his name? Smollett. Mo Mo Smollett, yeah. He, he pretended that there was some racism. And, and the problem with this is there really is real racism out there. We've never said there wasn't. The problem is when you get all these fake racist incidents coming up, what happens is when a real racist incident comes on, it will be ignored or it will just be assumed that it's the run of the mill thing or it'll be assumed it's like the boy crying wolf. And so we want to make sure that that never happens. So Kevin, over to you if you want to introduce, uh, make a few lines of introduction, explain what, what our goal here today is. Yeah, so our goal here, uh, so I'm, I'm Kevin McGarry. I'm the uh, co-founder with Neil on Every Black Life Matters. And we, we, are, we, we like to consider ourselves stalwarts of justice. So our main goal is just to make sure that, you know, we, we, we need to have justice and we need to be unified. We need to have a, a, a single way to adjudicate law and order and, and uh, to make sure that everybody gets their, their blind justice. And uh, one of the things that we're seeing with, with our friend uh, Koshi that we'll, Neil will introduce you to in a minute, he and his wife, but one of the things that we see is that this particular case is not blind justice. This is completely unjust from what we can tell and from all the evidence that you'll get a chance to hear. And so this is particularly, we're particularly passionate on behalf of our friend Koshi because this is, this is clearly, uh, you know, racist and, and, and unjust in so many ways. So we want to kind of go through that with you to show you, uh, you know, what some, in some cases, you don't have to be, you know, black, you don't have to be white, you don't have, but there's just some cases where racism does exist, where people have this thing about people who look different than them and they just go after them. And so uh, we think Koshi's case is, is, is one of those and we'd like you to hear you know, some of the facets and, and twists and turns with it because it's, it's really quite uh, astonishing when you think about this day and time. So um, yeah, Neil's gonna take us through with Koshi and his wife. If you can introduce uh, Koshi and his wife and then we can, yeah. we can get it. So this is a friend of mine for years now, Koshi George and Sheba, his wife, uh, Koshi is a accountant, and and to be fair and 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 transparent, he is the accountant for every Black Life Matters. Some a job that we trust him with. He's been doing a great job of it, and it's vexed us greatly that he's come under this. We never realized that the racism would be so close to our own organization, an organization designed to fight real racism. And so, uh, Coach why don't you a uh, brief introduction of your background, your professional background, and then see by your professional background too. Well, thank you, Neil and uh, Kevin, for doing this, and uh, really appreciate you guys uh, for <clears throat> taking on this task of sharing our story of what we've been experiencing over the last three years and ten months and counting. Uh, I'm a CPA by profession. I'm also a chartered accountant from India. We migrated here to the United States. Uh, my, I came here about 30 years ago and around the same time, my wife also came. And we both met here in the US and uh, we decided to get married. <laughs> and uh, Sheba was up in New York and I was here in San Francisco, San Jose Bay area. And I said, you know, she was excited to move here. And we began our life together since 2003. We have um, a wonderful 16-year-old daughter. Her name's Abigail, and uh, she was born in 2008. And uh, she's a junior in high school. And uh, we've been long-term residents of San Jose, California. And, uh, well, we have... Sheba? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Sheba. Hi, my name is Sheba, and I... Um... Yeah, moved here from New York to have a better life in California. I mean, it's not that I didn't have a better life in New York. I loved New York too, but my husband said um, nothing like the Bay Area. So I moved here, uh, leaving all my relatives back home and wanted to start a beautiful life here in the Bay Area and uh, found a job. I work as a pediatric trauma ICU nurse at Valley Medical Center. And now, um, since one year, I've transitioned to be a case manager for California Children's Services. That's a subsidiary of Medi-Cal. 
uh, and we've been living in this neighborhood for the last what 21 plus years and uh, that's what i'm gonna ask next yeah okay so um so just to put this in perspective so this all has to do with a neighbor of yours so koshi why don't you tell us uh i mean the, you don't need to give us an address obviously please don't uh but the general area where you're living in and i want you to know this is the bay area which is one of the most diverse uh one of the most accepting uh communities that i've ever lived in i lived in the bay area for 40 years before i moved so uh so Koshi, go, go ahead and tell us um the scenario what is happening and how did it start and uh let's jump right into it just give us a brief highlights and then we can go into some details here or there well we'll do we'll do so uh, we live in district 10 of san jose california um which is essentially silicon valley and, and so uh, who is your represent city council representative uh the city council representative is a person by the name of arjun batra okay so an indian too right yeah an indian, okay. yes yes yeah. by the way we should clarify that as you can probably see ethnically koshi and shiva are indians just like me um and so they hail from india originally arun is also a city councilman this then also an indian so just uh put that in context yeah arjun 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 so so uh this all started neil and uh, kevin on the 30th of november 2020 at around 10 o'clock we in the morning we had a knock on our door and this was COVID time so i opened the door i was making breakfast for my daughter and it was our next door neighbor who happens to be an attorney in santa clara county and also is an ex united states marine uh he i said oh hi how are you i won't give his name but i said oh, and then he said he started abusing me the filthiest of abuses my daughter was standing beside me and then he said i am done he said he it is he pointed his finger i'm done with you i'm going to make sure that you will lose your cpa license I'll make sure that you are only fit for mowing lawns and flipping hamburgers, and I'm going to put you in jail. I was like shocked. I said, what in the world has happened? And then um, since I was making breakfast, I was making some waffles or something, and that I had some dough on my hand, and I said, I just, I didn't want my daughter to hear all these filthy abuses that just came like a barrage at us. I shut the door, made breakfast, quieted my daughter down. My dad was, my daughter was saying, Dad, why is he putting, why is this one so putting you in prison? I said, listen, don't worry about it. I calmed her down and then went back to my office room and I had a barrage of texts. I had emails threatening me and then I had a voicemail, a couple of voicemails. I picked up the phone and it was the arborist. The arborist and his team were actually working in our backyard to take down two palm trees on our property, which were a real problem palm trees. These trees were, you know, they were roof rats that were jumping onto our roof from these trees that are closest to ours. Yes, six palm trees on our property and evergreen pines. These rat, roof rats were creating a total havoc. My wife told me, hey, you are in town. I'm, I normally I'm traveling around the globe a lot in my profession. My wife said, you're here. You are all grounded. Why don't you take care of these trees? So we called an arborist. Uh, we found them on next door and we called him and he, he looked at it. And he said, yeah, these are unwanted trees in San Jose. So just to clarify, these yeah. were, you were, you were allowed to remove these trees. You know, yeah. some of you don't live in California, don't realize how tightly they control all this stuff, but these trees were absolutely removable, right? They're, yes, yes, yes. And, and you were getting an arborist, a licensed arborist to do this. So yes. it's not like yes. you were going out there with an ax or anything. No, yourself, no, no, right? no, 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 no. So they came with a team of about nine or 10 people and these are tall trees. So they were there up there just chopping down the tree. The first tree got chopped down. That's when this fellow saw it. And that's what caused him to knock the door. I am clueless. I mean, like these guys are taking care of their work and we are inside the house. So I was- Now just to clarify, is the tree on his side or near his house or anything? No, no, the, no. The, both the trees are a good 500 yards away. It's on our property. These are single family homes. Right, so it's on the other side of the property from his property. Totally, okay. totally. So he lives on the west side of uh, our property. The, these trees are on the east side of the property. Okay, so there's a house in between them, your house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, the square footage of the whole property, the whole property is about 10,100 square feet. Okay. Uh, with lots of trees and, you know, so these roof rats were causing a real hassle. And, you know, those days my wife was working crazy hours at the hospital and she needed to- yeah, I mean, again, you don't need to justify why you want to take the tree. So, okay. but but you identified this as the cause of why he was angry with you, right? Yeah, 
So okay. at that point of time, the city was closed and the arborist told us, you do not need a license, Mr. George, to take these trees right. down. This is in the list of unwanted trees. The license arborist, right. So that's what happened. And so we didn't, we didn't bother. And so his contention was that this, this is a heritage tree. It's not heritage trees at all. And so the attack they're was all, around, by the way, they're all over California. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> These yeah. Bombs, yeah. These are yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, and then what he did was uh, he chased away the arborist. He says, I'm going to file lawsuits against you. And those guys disappeared. And so the voicemail was about, hey, Mr. George, we don't want to do anything with your property. Your neighbor is giving us enough grief. We don't want, we don't, we'll pay you back whatever you paid us also as advanced. And they just left. And so our backyard was a mess for months. Any other contractor we brought on board, he would chase them away. I finally realized I needed to get a proper permit, which I got. I got for both the trees, the tree that got taken out and as well as, and we had a medical doctor's letter. And based on that, the city of San Jose gave us a permit to take the, the both the trees down, plus clear all the debris. I called San Jose police. So on the day we took it out, that was on the 24th of March of 2021, we had the police. There were three police officers on site and a whole lot of my friends came from Sacramento all the way to Gilroy to be supportive of what was happening. <laughs> and this guy came out and he was mad. He was mad that a brown guy like me would dare to do all this and call the police on him and all this kind of thing. So from then onward started literally everyday harassment. Uh, he, we were not being allowed to uh, to get our garbage bin serviced and recycle bin serviced. Any guests coming to our home, he would start saying, get out of here. Go back to India. What are your buffaloes? You are rats from a third world country. This is a very racist. I mean, yes. Yes, yes. Let's, let's make sure people understand these are really racist. And by the way, we will post some pictures uh, to back up Mr. Koshi's, Mr. George's claims here. So, because yes. we do do our research here. We don't want to just say anybody who says, oh, somebody called me a racist. We're actually going to give you some evidence there. Yeah, yeah. You, so you are a blighted people from a third world country. Get out. We don't want you here. We are Americans. Remember, we are Americans and we don't want you here. OK, and this kept on happening. The, I mean, some of the things were utter profanity. For example, you would stand on the easement and say, where are your balls? Did you have them cut up and swallowed? OK, and then he would lift up his fist and say, come and fight me like a man. Put down your camera and come and fight me like a man. Because I used to hold my iPhone up every time he was doing all this kind of stuff. So this is the kind of provocation. And this is a person who is an ex-Marine, as I said. 78 years old but looks as healthy like a 30 35 year old very strong but that's not the image he puts on in the in the, in the criminal court let me say in the criminal court he comes as though he's hard of hearing he's old it's a pretense the same guy when he's on our eastman he's in mil military fatigue all the time and uh, which means marines and marines don't have necessarily the same army fatigue but his is like tight shorts and with the, with his marines cap and you know he threatens the whole neighborhood our entire neighborhood is frightened of this so, guy. so tell, tell us about that tell us about because some of the pictures i saw were him putting stuff in the driveway yes. and i remember when i came when we came to do our taxes um mm -hmm. that was all in the driveway and i asked you what is that right because mm -hmm. yeah. i couldn't park anywhere there was no place for me to park Yes. So let me tell you what he did was he put up an effigy of the Hindu goddess Kali. Kali is the goddess of death in India. I mean, India is a country which with Hindus who have, you know, different deities that they worship. And so the eastern part of India worships the goddess Kali. And she has her tongue sticking. If you can do a search on Ka goddess Kali, you'll see a person with the tongue stick sticking out, red tongue sticking out. And it's a very good, it's, it's an image of uh, death. And every Indian understands that I have lived in India all my life before I moved to the United States. I saw that it was a death threat towards us. And what he did was there's a spurious lawsuit he filed against us. He stuck it on the back of that effigy. This effigy was placed in, on a wheelbarrow with stones in it, big stones. And it was pay, placed on the center of the common easement. There's a common easement between five houses in a subdivision. And he placed it there so that everybody could see this. So it is open defamation. Uh, and then he, he, he put the spurious lawsuit in every neighbor's letterbox to make us look bad. Uh, and what was I, the, lawsuit? the lawsuit was against you? Against, against, the, what? against me and my wife. Okay. Uh, against my practice as a CPA. What was he, he claiming? Mean, what was he claiming? Well, 
uh, he says that me and my wife are running a fictitious, uh, a, 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 a fraudulent CPA practice. My wife has nothing to do with my CPA practice. She's a. But first of all, how does he get to file a lawsuit? That's something you tell the city and the city looks into it. But unless you're, how can you file a lawsuit unless, what standing does he have to file a lawsuit? Unless he well, he's a lawyer. He's a lawyer and he's a lawyer. And you would be amazed. There's so much to tell. I don't know how much we can cover in half an hour. But uh, this, what this guy does is he says he's a lawyer with a rock star standing in San Jose and nobody can question whatever allegations he makes. Whatever allegations he makes are absolutely true. That's what that's what he claims, and he comes at it with that attitude. If a judge goes against him, he hammers the judge. If he goes, he he shoots down our own attorneys with all kinds of skullduggery he indulges in. So, let's talk about that. So, I mean, normally if somebody goes to court with a, a frivolous lawsuit, you know, you the judge will figure out that this has nothing to do with it. Or if they come and they check out your your license and they realize that you're you know you're not doing anything fishy, that would all mm -hmm. go away. So, mm -hmm. how does he explain how this man manages? to keep this in the court and why nothing is happening to protect you because you've obviously gone and said look this guy's a racist he's trying to hassle us i mean have you talked to the mayor have you talked to the da tell us oh, yes. about that oh yeah i i've been to the mayor i've been to the da um several times and uh <clears throat> It's a very slow process, Neil, the whole judicial system. And he knows the system by the back of his hand, and he knows how to play and, and By the way, full transparency, I'm a friend of the mayor, and I know the DA. So full transparency here. We've met, we've talked, they know who I am. Um, mm. And, and I, they are good people. So um, oh, yes. they, I think what's happening here is that there, there's there's so much that this guy is doing behind the scenes. or or that he, So it's not an easy task. This is why somebody needs to stop this with... Sure uh yes. realizing this is a real racism the city needs to understand yeah. that this yeah. is racism at its root and you need public opinion and you need people to be uh to realize that it needs to be stopped it's not something you can just say oh yeah we'll go through uh you know it, it, a lot of times uh, a lot the courts are afraid of more lawsuits right so mm -hmm. tell us more about that i mean why how come we can't see something being done he oh, used I want to just interject. I, I think you forgot to mention just um, that during this harassment initially, you know, what he did is uh, use strobe light, big strobe light, because our bedroom um, window, you know, faces his garage. So what he would do is like, in the nighttime, the strobe light goes on, no matter how much blind, uh, you know, we cover the with the blinds, but still you can, the yeah, light yeah, seeps yeah. in. And he would blast the during the daytime, blast the radio to the the max. And that during that time, Abby used to have um, you know homeschooling because of the COVID restriction. And he would bring the the little boombox with the extension cord close it to our garage. And every time we call the cops, he would say, "Oh, we are not. They are not Americans. They don't know what music is." And um, the well, more American, yeah, racist. <laughs> yeah, and the more we call the cop, the more the next time the volume increases. And I used to dread coming home after you know working COVID hours in the hospital. I used to dread because he would wait in the middle of the Eastman. He knows exactly what time the cars come in, what time we leave out, because he's watching us twenty four seven with the binoculars. Even to now, to 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 this day, this is what he does, which is with his binoculars way knows every timing of ours the time we return and by the time my car returns or his car returns he throws objects in the easement he makes he stands and blocks he's done so much damage that's why i'm surprised how he's getting away with all that i mean we have a restraining order against him but yeah so you, yeah and i think i think part of this is um that as you you know and we i want to talk about the effect on abby uh, at some point for sure yeah. but um but so so explain go back so the cops show up right how come they don't have any teeth to stop this and and, so, and so, so, so go back to that whole thing why is so, he so successful so this is what he does when the cops come come here you public servant this is what he does you know who i am i'm a rock star lawyer in san jose do you know who i am i'm a uh, adjunct professor at santa clara jesuit university you know who i am all the judges were my students or um, uh, many of the lawyers are my students and uh, they i we and me and the judges we rolled together these are some of his words uh and, and then get out of my property do you know i went to vietnam do you know i'm, a, I'm an ex-marine uh i went to pepperdine for my mba 
So these are some of the things he does. And once he's done that, he says, I've got a lawsuit against this fellow. I'm going to put him in jail. OK, do you understand who you're fooling around with? The cops just twiddle their thumbs and they leave. Yeah, yeah. So they, they seem to have no no way to stop because there's what we really need is we need a law like saying this guy's acting like a racist right he needs to stop uh yeah. there needs to be some punitive um consequences to yes actual racist acts right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, uh yeah so, so many, what we many, really need is we need a civil rights attorney to step in yeah. and hit the man with a lawsuit a civil rights lawsuit against no, I, I I told Civil Rights Department under uh, uh, Governor Newsom, I have told California versus Hate, it's an organization that Gavin Newsom has set up. And this fellow, and so all of her complaints, they go, they talk to this guy and he says, oh, oh, I did not know that was a Hindu goddess that was created by my grandchildren, who five-year-old and six-year-old grandchildren. Nonsense, he lies. How, oh, God is death. Yeah. Yeah. How can five and six-year-old children make a metal plate? Okay, it's a metal plate and design that stuff and stuck stick it up there in a wheelbarrow full of stones so he gets away with lies he gets away with lies with his credentials he brings up all his credentials i went to vietnam i am a i'm an ex-marine i've been 46 years of law practice here i have no blemish the reason he has no blemish is because he he has this methodology of foul mouth language and you won't believe what one of the sergeants in San Jose police told me, Mr. George, we are trying to get a word across to him, but he's like an AK-47. He keeps on talking. We don't even, yeah. we don't even get a chance to talk back and explain. Yeah, it would it. seem that it would seem that some criminal charges need to be filed in some way or something. Yeah. There are two people, nobody has it. Pardon? He, he has been arrested once for violating the restraining order. We have a seven year restraining order on the guy. And so, okay. you know, so he's been arrested. Uh, he's been he's there are two criminal charges against him and guess what he recently told the criminal court and he uses the techniques of demurrer and excuses and find yeah, so all sort of lawyer techniques that we yeah. don't even know we don't yeah. right, right exactly and and he enjoys it the day he comes back from the court he'll be standing there and clapping his hands laughing at me and sheba and then when we are coming in our car he walks towards our car as though he's going he's threatening but he won't do anything he knows how to rattle the cage as much so that yeah, so it's very threatening it's, actions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, very, very, very similar to uh, racist actions. You know, it's the old KKK type mm -hmm. burning the cross on somebody's lawn. You never yeah. actually hurt them physically because right. when you link yeah. them, you link them with the mob, link them when away from the cameras. Today we have cameras everywhere, so you can't do anything physical because we know you'd catch them on the right. camera. Yeah. But he is doing everything else that comes yeah. close to that, and so yeah. we really need to get some civilized rights attorney to move in. We need to get yeah. the, the government to move in. We need the mayor to start doing something or make an announcement. We need the uh, the DA to start making some announcements and, and declaring it. But the more, most of all, we need the public to pick this up. So we want you to share this on your, if you're sharing this video, we want you to share this with everybody. We want everybody to know about it. This has to become public because it's not right for anybody. Remember, if it can happen to one of us, it can happen to you. Yes, yeah, it's absolutely. happened to me. We'll if you're a person of color, if you're an Indian or black or Hispanic, and and this white Marine Vietnam vet starts to decides that he's going to pick on you, who's next, right? And it could be a white person too. Now understand, we would yeah. we would stand up for a white person being attacked by a black person too, or an Indian person. We will stand up for that because we're standing for justice and we're trying to stand yeah. for truth. You That's know, right. it, it, let me let me talk about a few things. What he did to our daughter. On the 21st yeah. of February, 2021, my daughter was standing outside. This is again COVID time. She was doing a school project. She was taking some pictures for the school. And this guy brought his SUV up to her and started racing it and looking her down very close, like very close. My child fled into the house and came into this very room where I'm sitting. And she said, dad, so-and-so is scaring me. I have never seen my child that scared. She's an outdoor kid. She roller skates. She serves on the high seas. Okay, this is a place water polo. This child from then onwards, Neil started internalizing and her grades dropped. There was a time when the school did not want to promote her to high school, but I dropped everything in my profession. I mean, I said my profession, I'm a self-employed guy. I had to drop everything just to bring her grades back. Lo and behold, she's okay now. We have been examined by a forensic doctor and the doctor fell off his chair seeing amount of stress we have been through over the last three years and 10 months. And uh, oh. and these are all documented. And, uh, you know- So let me, let, me, let me ask you this. So we understand that what the situation is. What can people do to help you? And Kevin, if you want to jump in at any time, please go ahead. How, how can 
Yeah, people are listening to this. Hopefully, enough people will hear this. How can they help you? What's the best thing they can do to help you? I am shocked, Neil and Kevin, that such a person who is a lawyer in San Jose has an MBA from Pepperdine, is uh, is been in this in this area practicing law for forty six years, can get away with this kind of open attitudes and behaviors. People have testified on the day when we had a restraining order given to us. The judge, the Honorable Judge Shona Schwartz. She was emotional. She said, Mr. George, do not mistake all of our armed forces to be like this. I said, no, I come from a family of armed forces from back in India from generations. I have never seen any, any armed forces personnel ever behave like this. You know the number of people who have fled our neighborhood, Vietnamese, Indians, other race people, color, people color, they've, they've broken their leases. Those who are tenants of other homeowners said they've fled from here because of his behaviors towards them. But well, you can't do that because you try to. Let me ask this. Go ahead. Let me ask this real quick. Uh, have you thought about just putting your house for sale, moving, and just get a better place? And we go? did that for the sake of our daughter and for bringing a great job. We were staying in an Airbnb in Campbell for a year. We never imagined we would stay there for a year. Every month, religiously, we were going out to see homes and we couldn't find any home to rent on a more permanent so that we could rent this one. Then other people said, what are you trying to do? Rent it. You lose your tenants in no time because he's going to give you more grief. Then we thought of selling the house. We put the house on the market. OK, uh, we were staying in an Airbnb. We used to come back because we just moved with our suitcases. All of our stuff is in our home. Our home was an empty home for a year. We were paying mortgage and property tax on this house, plus $5,000 Airbnb rent every month for a year. We ran out of money. And that's when we decided to come back and fight this. And from then onwards, our problems have been compounded because he keeps complaining about our house to the city. I'll show you letters he's written to the city saying that this house needs to be red tagged. Yeah. PG&E and, e and electricity should be, water should be stopped. All lies about our home, that our house has got, what is that, Shiba? Black mold. Black, Black mold. mold. Yeah. But have, you, have you tried gonna... to sell it though? Have you just tried to put it on the market? Yes, yes we, did. we did. We had Compass Realtors. He chased away the realtor. He chased away their staff. He would engage with four families who were interested in buying our home. We had a complete inspection done. We even gave full disclosure. Our attorney gave full disclosure about his behaviors and everything. Those people said, Mr. George, we love your home. He would put nails on our driveway to dissuade yeah. these people from buying our home. And yeah. he would engage with them and say all kinds of malarkey about our home. And they said, we don't find any fault with your home, but we know who your neighbor is. We don't want to live here because He's, he's put lawsuits against you and it runs with the land. And there is no way that we, we know that if you leave, we buy your home, we will be in the same soup that you are. And so we are like on Guantanamo Bay in a sense. Every day we are having a waterboarding kind of an experience of threats from this fellow. He can't leave our home. The moment we leave our home, he's out there making fun of us, trying to say stupid things and get, our, get, get us distracted. Or he'll play Freddie Mercury's queen at the highest volume. Another one bites the dust, another one bites the dust. Well, we don't let it bother well, us, but it's a, it's so, a, it's let me so let me say this. I, I'm I'm really sorry for what you and your family have had to go through. This is torment and torture, in my opinion. This yes. is racist and bigoted, um, and it's a shame that in this day and time, in a in a progressive city like San Jose, right. in a progressive state like California, yeah, we have these kinds of antics, and you know you haven't been able to do anything about it. You know, it seems like the the city and the, the the city leadership and the 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 judges and the attorneys they can't do anything about this and 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 so um you know we wanted to just expose people to the fact that people are still being tormented and abused to this very day uh you unfortunately have this situation and and it but you know this this really illuminates for everybody that look we still have a lot more uh you know we have long still have a little bit ways to go we you know everything's not kumbaya i mean we still have people that are being tormented and abused by neighbors and, and in other ways and we should we should all as good neighbors look out for one another and be more conscientious about how we treat each other so so coming back kushi and shiba what can people do uh, to help you, a video uh, can they obviously they can share this video. They can spread the news. But talk talk to us about emails. Talk to about letters. Talk to us. What can they do physically in response to this to help your cause? I think the public should con contact our honorable mayor Jeff Rosen. They should contact our no, mayor, mayor DA, Matt DA. Mahan. Yeah, yeah, sorry, uh, the DA uh, Jeff Rosen. 
um, uh, our mayor, Matt Mahan, the sheriff, the, the police captains, right to them, and also to the State Bar of California. Why is we'll, it that- We'll put up emails. Um, there'll be emails in the links uh, mm -hmm. uh, below in the, in the introduction below. Make sure you, yeah. I have written to the State Bar of California four times with video evidence, with the restraining order, the, 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 the judgment transcript of uh, Judge Shona Schwartz saying heart so-and-so is a menace to society. She has literally said that. And uh, the 27 people who he indulges in witness tampering. So, you know, like, for example, in our court system, it's an open system, right? You have to give the list of witnesses and their addresses and phone numbers. He would call them up and threaten them from coming to the court. These are all being done by a licensed attorney of San Jose, Santa Clara, right. of California. I have spoken to uh, attorneys in Southern California, and they tell me, Mr. George, this would not happen in Southern California. We are shocked at the way the judicial system functions in Santa Clara County. That's what they would yeah. tell us. Yeah, the judicial. So, Neil, to answer your question, I think someone needs to stop him in his tracks from this uh, unnecessary lawsuits. Like the state bar should either get his license off because he's a threat to a society he's a threat to a common person uh people fleeing the neighborhood we're the only one that's staying put but we are getting we are being harassed every day yeah, every day stuff, right? yeah. yeah every day he makes these loud bangs against the fence just to rattle us i mean thank god by the grace of god we are not getting rattled but we are stressed this is immense stress on our uh, mentally and physically for all three of us, and even for our little dog too, because every time a dog sees them, starts barking because she knows this man makes like a lot of noise and to disturb our peace. So he needs to be stopped in his tracks by stopping all the few uh, unnecessary lawsuits, take his license off. People need to reach out to Jeff Rosen and, uh, you know, uh, stop so, him. So absolutely. So we need to write to the bar. We need to write to Jeff Rosen. We need to write to the mayor. We need to write to the sheriff. We'll we'll have all these links down there. Um, let's let's wrap this up. I just want to, um, as Kevin said, this it's just disgusting and sad and tragic. And I'm really sorry that you guys are going to have to go through this. The um, we're you know we're obviously um, going to be praying that there is a quick resolution. I, it's been going on for four years now. So um it's time that uh the state took i mean what is the purpose of the government the purpose of the government is to protect your inalienable rights I mean, yes, yes. Independence is that to secure the rights now we get our rights from god but they're inalienable rights and the purpose right. of the government is to secure those inalienable rights and their mm -hmm. right to be able to live in peace is definitely one of them it's an american thing it's the what the americans have always believed in and so for sure. uh the american the american government the state government the, the county government and the city government uh, not to be able to stop this. They need to come up with the ingenuitive ways to do this because uh, this is unacceptable. And if they um, if they get pressure, I believe they will act on it because it has to be, they have to wake up every day going, oh, we gotta solve this problem. We gotta solve this problem. Yeah. Thank you. Thank I, you. Wanna, uh, I wanna wrap this up with a final word from uh, both of you. And then Kevin, if you can uh, give us a final word and we'll wrap it up. What do you want to add? <laughs> you, want to say, you, you want to go, Shiva, and then I'll. Um, no, really, thank you for thinking about us. Thank you for bringing this forward because we have tried to reach out to all government officials. Koshi has tried to reach out through, uh, you know, various uh, social media, but justice has not been served, and um, we need justice because, uh, like you said, this is America. This is a free country, and we every. We taxpaying citizen, everybody has the right to live and breathe freely. And we want to do that. We want to wake up one day and not be tensed about coming out of walking out of a house and feeling that we are being watched and we are uh, we are not free to walk out and uh, not mocked and harassed. We want to live and breathe freely in San Jose and not run away just because a neighbor is bullying and sell a home and be in hiding. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Neil, we, uh, Kevin, we lost our son in 2006. Uh, and then now we are watching another child being a wonderful kid, uh, you know, being destroyed 
by all this. I mean, we, she's a lot better now, but we don't know what goes on. She's not yeah. having a normal childhood. As a 16-year-old, she should be able to be free to move around. Yeah. It's tough. I've lost substantially all of our life savings to law legal fees. And uh, we have no hope of recovering anything because he keeps playing the system like this. And uh, it's horrible, horrible, horrible. Uh, every lawyer we appoint, he shoots them down. We have seen 47 to 48 lawyers from Burlingame all the way to Southern California. Some of them know this guy. And they said, we're sorry, Mr. George, but we know who he is. He's a jerk. But that's it. But I mean, what about us? We live here. And we have to keep on facing this on a day-to-day -day basis. It's horrible. I really hope this draws attention. It's not just about us. It's about my Vietnamese, my Singaporean neighbors yes. uh, and other neighbors. They, one of them was crying on my shoulder. Why did I buy a house over here, Mr. George? We are being harassed and we are being bullied. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't Let's just be a lesson to uh, all of us. You know, we, we uh, very sorry we have to hear your story as part of the lesson that we can all hopefully learn and grow from. But the fact is, is there are legitimate uh, legitimate cases of bigotry and racism, torment and torture and abuse to this day that you know unfortunately yes. you and your family have to endure as you know right. sort of representative of, of what can happen and what does happen still. Uh, your your case is a legitimate one of mm -hmm. bigotry and racism, and uh, we we as Americans, all Americans, need to stand against it. Yeah. Uh, as Neil said at the beginning, you know, the, the Jesse Smollett stories and this and that, that people try to sensationalize to, you know, make up stories to, to try to say that they've, they've endured some form of racism, that that's garbage. What you're enduring and what you're having to endure for the past four years, your entire family, yes. is, is just shameful. It, it, it's, um, you know, we're very sorrowful to hear stories like this. But uh, first, I don't think that your story is the only story. I, I believe that throughout America, we have enclaves yes. of people mm -hmm. who are doing the same kind of abuse. And what we need to be able to do as neighbors is open our eyes and look for opportunities to intervene and to make sure that we don't fall into the trap of, of, of abusing our neighbors or or being bigoted and racist towards people just because they look different or, you know, have exactly. different skin tone or whatever. And so, um, but the, the amount of, uh, uh, you know, I applaud you for hanging in there. I mean, four years with this kind of abuse, but on the other hand, we're going to continue to pray for you. We're going to continue to support you with, with letters of support going to these agencies to make sure that something is done about this. Four years is way too long for this to have yes. uh, been carried on for so long. So mm -hmm. uh, our prayers are with you. Our support is with you and we'll put up the link so everybody can help in some way even a small way and 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 help to uh, end this this level of abuse for you and your families so thank you thank you very much thank, thank you, you for being on thing thanks for sharing the story because this is important uh we are we are we would we want to be an instrument of god's justice yes, yes please you know you both understand my english don't you yeah <laughs> well this guy says when i tried to talk to reason to with him he says i can't understand your english and he blocks me like that that, that's a very racist tactic, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much again. Please take action. Don't just Thank let you. this go. Take action. Make this happen. Share. Um, you can uh, look at the email. Send an email. Don't think, oh, yeah, I'm just one person. No, a lot of one persons will make a big difference. Thank you very much.